Black and the gentlewoman from the great state of Massachusetts. Mrs. Presley is recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, all I can think about as I've been sitting here is, uh, there but for the grace of God go I. Uh, many of my colleagues today have really proved that our greatest deficit as a nation is not one of resource, but of empathy. Our greatest wealth as a nation is the health of our people. And a meaningful, universal, and permanent paid leave policy is about the health of our people, about the stabilization of our families. So many of your opinions fly in the face of what you often characterize is your promotion of family values. This really flies in the face of that. And furthermore proves that you value people's labor in the traditional sense more than you do their very lives. As someone who had the honor of being a caregiver to my mother uh, in the final weeks of her life as she uh, valiantly battled leukemia, although I was away from work, I was certainly not off. It requires great emotional and physical labor and there's no place else in the world that I would have rather been to support my mother in her transition. Your comments not only dishonor parents, um, people who've grown their family uh, through adoption, um, but the millions of caregivers who in this moment feel alone and unseen, um, you've just contributed uh, to that hurt. But let me get to my questions. Um, Ms. Bigelow, there has been a long and inaccurate assumption that people with disabilities are only the recipients of care and not the providers of care. The when the reality is that people with disabilities play both roles and often face barriers to benefits and services as a result. Can you elaborate on the importance of centering people with disabilities in any effort to advance universal paid family and medical leave? Yes, thank you, Congresswoman, for this question. It's a really important point to make. Uh, people with disabilities are a valuable part of our communities and our workforce. A disability inclusive paid leave program can help support people with disabilities to more fully participate in the economy and have economic independence. A recent analysis of FMLA data found that nearly 16% of workers who took any leave in the past 12 months may have done so for a disability and nearly one third of those workers with a disability also had at least one child under 18. So it's important to remember that workers with disability already have lower incomes, meaning they are less likely to have savings to rely on. So centering them in the paid family and medical leave policy will really help bring a financial lifeline to them, which is part of uh, their economic stability. Thank you. Um, and as I transition, I wanted to, uh, Ask the chair if I could enter a report uh, into the record. Uh, the report is titled Paid Leave is Essential for Healthy Moms and Babies. It's by the National Partnership in Collaboration with the National Birth Equity Collaborative. Without objection. All right. Um, so we've spoken about the, the, the disability justice, a part of this that is often overlooked. I wanted to talk about uh, pregnancy loss. Uh, which is also often overlooked in other health events. Three out of four people who take paid leave do so for reasons outside of maternity or parental care. Ms. Bigelow, why is it important to establish a national paid leave program that supports a diverse array of care needs? Well, like you said, the majority of people need time off to care for a family member's serious health issue or their own. And this is for things like cancer treatment to help an aging parent recover from a fall or to be with a child in the hospital. Comprehensive paid leave improves health outcomes for those who need care and prevents people from having to make impossible choices between being there for their families and their own health and their jobs and income. It's also important for gender equity because women are more likely to take parental leave. A policy that only covers new parents could reinforce gender discrimination. Um, so finally, as a population in the workforce that are both aging, a comprehensive paid leave policy is just smart economics 
to ensure older workers can continue working and can manage work with caring for an aging parent or loved one. Thank you. And Ms. Shabal, what are some of the policies I want to talk about um, those that are receiving uh, SSI and SSDI? What are some of the policies, Ms. Shabal, that this committee should be considering when it comes to ensuring that a paid family medical leave program is inclusive for individuals who work and receive supplemental security income? Diana, your time has expired, but Ms. Shabal, you may respond to the gentle lady's question. I'll be brief. Thank you for the question. I think we need to ensure that any new programs we put in place are not uh, taking away rights to other programs for people who are working. So somebody who has on, is on SSI or is, has a partial disability but is working part-time uh, and then needs to take leave must have that portion of their wages replaced and not be barred from accessing um, either of those benefits because of the receipt of the other. The point here is to pull low-income people and people who are living paycheck to paycheck, just barely, uh, up to the level where they're going to be able to continue to pay their bills and make ends meet uh, and have security for themselves. Uh, this, is, this is about stabilization, financial independence, and well-being. Gentlewoman's time has expired. The gentlewoman...